I am Negan. I am Negan. What's up, what's up, people? Welcome to another episode of I Am Negan, a TWD Universe podcast. My name is Adam Vale. I'm an editor over at thecoalition.com, and I'm joined by Editor-in-Chief Rich Bailey Jr. What's up, Rich? What's up, Adam? What's up, listeners and viewers? Yeah, people, what is up is right. Thanks again for all the follows over on Spotify and on iTunes, and of course, YouTube and over at The Coalition. It's, it's always good to see, especially when it comes to the spinoffs. Yes, we see a lot of people jump on for Walking Dead proper mothership, understandable. But when it comes to the spinoffs, just like most shows, eh, people are like, eh, I'm not going to follow that. But uh, this go around seems to be a little different. We're seeing a little uptick with, with people following us and jump on board, which is great because Fear the Walking Dead usually is good. Uh, it's it's had a, a rocky start for this mid season uh, return. But overall, it, it, I consider it one of the better spinoffs when it comes to t- television shows. World Beyond was pure trash. We all know that. Everybody knows that. So we don't talk about that. But when it comes to fear, it's solid. And then, of course, we got a few more that are down the pipeline. So stick around. Thanks a lot. And uh, quick heads up. I know this one is coming a little close. If you're listening to this on, was it today's 24th? Sunday, right? We got uh, this episode which we're about to discuss, which is season seven, episode ten, Morning Cloak for Fear the Walking Dead. So that's there. But if not, you could you've probably already seen it. It was over on AMC Plus, and I think episode eleven is already there on AMC Plus. So we'll probably see if we can bang that out earlier this week. You know, so uh, if you haven't uh, checked this out before, we will be doing a full rundown with spoilers and a discussion, our thoughts. Of what we think is going on with this show going forward and uh, just break it down so let's get into it three two one boop uh i don't think it was that bad at least compared to last episode which was pretty bad and boring this one made more sense and i know we don't talk about this people and that's one thing rich and i we do not discuss the episode so that way we we have all our thoughts and everything just spew out while we're recording and uh, one thing he did send a message was uh, he did not like this episode, but he I, I could see why. Once he said that, I knew exactly why when I was watching, because there is a teen romance that takes place, which is very reminiscent of what we got in World Beyond. So I, I can get that. Was that your was that what you thought the issue was? Rich? Uh, that's exactly what the issue is that I had. However, it, it, I did, you know, there is something that as we get into talking about more about this episode, there is one thing that I did like, but I'm going to save that for when we get to that point. But yeah, yeah, that instantly took me out of the episode because I've seen enough of that in uh, World Beyond yeah. to know that it's not going to end well. <laughs> yep, yeah, 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 it's true. It's true. So uh, it takes place for this episode. We're back at the tower. Strand is on a mission doing something else. So Howard, his second in command, he's running the show right now. And we're introduced to a young guy named Ali who is uh, doing everything he can to work his way up. He wants to be a ranger. He wants to go out there and prove himself. So Howard's like, well, you got to complete some tasks to show your loyalty and your worth. And then this is where I think this is the first time we're introduced to Strand's butterfly collection, right? I don't think we've ever seen his butterfly collection. Yeah, that's correct. Right? So apparently he has a collection, and there's one that he's missing called The Morning Cloak, which is the name of this episode. And apparently it's very rare. It only lives for a year. And it's, I guess Howard thinks it survived the apocalypse. And with the nuclear blast that's going on outside, and it tells Ali, go find one. And this right here had my eyes rolling because I'm like, oh, come on now. Is this where we're going with this? He's going to go out there and don't tell me he finds this damn butterfly, especially with how bad things are out there. Oh, sure enough, he, he does find this butterfly. And again, I was like, oh, I'm about to rage quit. Like, this this is already upsetting me. But it does turn around. So uh, there's a butterfly. It's a walker. He, you, you figured it out. He picked it up. He got the butterfly. He puts it in a little case. Still, I'm still amazed that he was able to find his butterfly. And during the, the current situation but as he's about to leave he sees was it, it was a horse and uh he's basically it's a 
person with a mask on, they struggle. He wins the upper hand on it. He points his gun. He's like, take the mask off. And it's Charlie. So before I go any further, um, were you surprised to see Charlie? And were you surprised by this whole intro of, hey, Ali, the mission is go get a butterfly? Uh, well, I, I felt like we were, we, were, we were long overdue to get an update on some of the other characters because we never saw them actually die on the show. So I was glad to see Charlie, you know, to see what her role was going to be uh, in this particular episode. But them starting it out with this other character, Ali, uh, not really too surprised, but it, it does fo- follow the same formula of when you introduce a new character. Um that meets their fate by the end of the episode. Uh-huh. That uh, was something that I did not. That it, well, I'm a little because we, we were talking about that in the last yeah. uh-huh. recap we did with Paul uh, dying at the end of the episode. So that that's why I was uh, I kind of knew when I saw that character. Okay, this character probably will not make it to the end of the episode. Yeah, and, and that's what's uh, <laughs> that was sad. And I knew I was like, there, here we go again with this whole little trope. <laughs> but the thing is with Charlie. Is that Charlie, for some people that don't know, early on, early seasons, she actually killed one of the main characters. She killed Nick. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what gave her the, the, the Fear the Walking Dead fame for that. Because a lot of people are like, oh, she's just one of the, the cast members. Randall's they picked up along the journey. No, no, no. She's a key one. Because she had a crazy backstory back with the group that she used to travel with. And at the baseball field with Madison and all that. And she killed Nick. She shot him and killed him, and that was Madison, and that's Alicia's brother, Madison's son, and Alicia's brother. So, it's a, it's a big part with that. So to see her here, and they bring her back to the base and to the tower, and he, Howard's trying to figure out what's going on. Why are you here? And she was like, "Well, uh, I looked at the date on the submarine, and I saw that this was my birthday. I'm 13 years old." And I'm like, "Damn, that's crazy. 13, going through all this." Uh, yeah, I, I could see some of this making more sense now when she gives her reasoning. Saying, you know, I want to live a normal life. Uh, living on that, that spot there in the summary, that's not a normal life. I see what you got here. I want to be part of it. Her her, her uh, ex- explanation of how she was going to get in didn't make more sense. Oh, I'm gonna, I figured I could just sneak in and just live amongst everyone. <laughs> and and I, I'm glad that the writers actually added this line with how I was like, what, you thought you were going to live in the walls? Because it's true. It's like, how how big is this place that you think no one's going to notice you? <laughs> Especially if you plan on living a normal life. Normal life means interacting with others, getting a job, uh, you know, just becoming one within the community. You can't do that if you're just uh, sneaking your way in. So, uh, long story short, they go back and forth on it, and she wants to prove herself. She This is what she wants, this whole thing. So we find out that uh, the there were some guys that went out, some of the rangers, they went out to go find, what's it, the elevator parts that they needed in some building, and they got contaminated. One of the guys who died, well, one of the guys made it, everybody else died, and the one that made it, he's got radiation burns and a few other things going on. So um, long story short on that one, too, they just throw them off the top. And uh, th- that was funny because I was like, oh, that's kind of messed up. But then Howard explains it. He was like, well, he vowed to serve the tower any way he can, living or uh, in, while he's alive or when he's dead. And now he serves as one of the walkers who protects the tower as well as the dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you, you know what? That makes perfect sense. I, I agree with that. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. Because at first I'm like, damn, they didn't even want to treat him. They just threw this sucker right off the tower. But mm-hmm. no, no. It's like he, he was going to die anyway because of uh, the amount of radiation. So it was like, this is how he could serve the tower. So anyway, Ali was like, well, let me go. I'll go. I'll get this. And then Charlie says, well, f- well, first Charlie, I think it was Charlie that wanted to do it. She wanted to prove that she can do it. And then Ali was going to go along with her. And that's it. That's their journey. They're going to go out there and they're going to find the elevator parts that's needed. And that's it. That's the mission. So before we go any further, what did you think of this pairing? Because, I mean, at this point, you already know. We got a young guy. We got a young girl. They're going out alone. Either someone's going to die or we're going to see some kind of romantic uh, relationship develop. Right? That's what you're picking up from this? Well, yeah. I mean, the interesting dynamic here is that you know, Charlie, they were trying to find out what is the true, what is she truly here for? What is her real purpose? So, 
from a viewer standpoint, I was also interested in that because I already knew when she was talking to them, that was not what her goal was. She had a much deeper purpose of why she was there. So, uh, yeah, I, I will say it was interesting from that standpoint because now you're going to get the chance to see her go on this trip, this trip with uh, with Ali, and then eventually you're going to find out what her true motives are. Yeah, yeah, you know. So we see June also there and JD Senior. It looks like JD Senior is one of the higher ups now with the Rangers, right? He was like right underneath Howard when it comes to strategizing and coming up with plans and all that. So they they, mm-hmm. they we see a little bit of them in this one. And so uh, they go out there, they get to this location, and this is the other part that sort of threw me off, is that when they get over there to this area, you hear some voices, and I was like, all right, take cover, Let's, and they take over, and then well, where the voices pass, and it's like, all right, they left, the group. And I'm thinking, who, who's this other group? We don't know much about anything when it comes to this world after the nuclear blast. So you would think they would at least name that group. Like, oh, we know who these randos are that are strolling around. Because I don't know if this is still the, what are they called, the stalkers? Remember, or the first episode of season seven? And there was that group that were scavenging body parts and stuff. And we thought that it was uh, strands people, but it wasn't. So maybe it's those guys. I don't know, because they, they play another part. They come back later on in this episode but it, it's just little holes like that sort of bother me because it's like if you know to take cover that you don't trust them meaning mm-hmm. for Ali then who are they you should know something about it then just just fill us in a little backstory on them it's like oh that's some crazy nomad types that uh maybe they might be uh you know cannibals or whatever I don't know throw something in there just some dialogue just instead of just saying oh let's take cover Take cover from what? How do we know they're a threat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that that's what my, my point here. All right, so uh, they seem to be bonding. They're communicating back and forth about things, especially on the way there. They get into some deep dialogue about, he starts talking about his father, and uh, his father was a boxing fan. That's why he was named Ali and the whole thing. And She talks about wanting to have a normal life. If uh, this is before they got to that location, they found a bowling alley. She's never bowled. He found that uh, impossible to believe. But then again, she's 13, and with all things that have happened, yeah, I, that makes sense. So she wants to bowl. And then she, he was like, we'll bowl later. I was like, well, it might not be a later. You know, what if we don't make it back? And then again, planting that seed. It's like, yeah, somebody's going to die on this mission. Something's going to happen. And I, I, at this point, this is where it starts. You know the music starts changing and stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, this is this is it. This is where it's getting to that point that it starts feeling like World Beyond." <laughs> but but the thing here, in fact, I'll go a little further on this, is that once they, she says, "All right, we get to the location, and she's going to work her way up. She works best alone." Two things were popping in my head. I was thinking maybe this is the trap. Maybe this is where Morgan and everybody come out and they grab him and interrogate him for more info. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's why that this whole situation of oh, I'm just going to go in first and leave you out here alone, or this is where he dies. <laughs> you know, it's like he's by himself. He doesn't really know. He's not familiar with these type of missions. Uh, Charlie's been around for a while. She's seen some shit. She's been involved in a lot of crazy missions. So I'm pretty sure she can handle herself. So anyway, she's up there. Things are getting crazy. Those nomad guys show up. They grab him. They're like, all right, you know, we want to get inside. What's going on? And so he opens up the front door. Because remember, that was her whole thing of going upstairs through whatever method that she found. Because she like, we go in the front door. That's where all the walkers are. They're always in the lower level. So he opens up the door. And these nomad guys start shooting and, and doing a whole little firefight with the walkers. But they get overrun and they die. They all die. And uh, this bothers me again. This little part there, because where are you getting ammo? That's the whole thing with The Walking Dead itself and the the show is that you're low on supplies. We're constantly looking for supplies. Then you have to go old school method like with Daryl and use crossbows and spears <laughs> and knives. You're over here using AK-47s and just like hosing them down and still not able to clear the area. 
So where are you getting these weapons from? Clearly your group has a good amount of supplies if you're willing to just unload like this. And I guess you're not that familiar with how the whole process works because if you start shooting off rounds like that, you're just going to lure more walkers. Mm -hmm. it, it, that just didn't work for me. That, that whole part is pretty much my point. That did not work for me. So he works his way up and then he, he finds her and she, she looks, uh, she has no mask on as a weapon to your mask, it's like, oh, I fought a bunch of walkers. And you see a bunch of them dead everywhere. It's like, you did this? Like, yeah, I did this. And there's some more over there, too. You know, but um, I had to do what I had to do. That's when they start getting into their whole thing about life and, and what they need to do in life. And then she comes clean and she explains, listen, uh, I was sent here by Morgan. No surprise there. We all saw that. But his job, her job, I should say, was to turn off the beacon. Now, <laughs> I, I, I was like, that, that was like, how did you think she was going to be able to do that? Like, oh, just trust me. Oh, can I take a look at the roof? Oh, by the way, can I take a look at that big spotlight? Where is it connected to? All right, I'm turning this off. Like, that, I don't know. That takes, that's, that takes a long time. To me, I'm thinking this is a good multi-week, maybe a month or two operation to gain that trust, to get that close. So I, I don't know what, maybe they just had to come up, the writers, of some justification of why she was there. And now she was going to go about doing it. And it's like, oh, her mission should be to turn off the beacon. You know, for what? Because if anything, it's the spotlight, yes, in one direction. But as we've seen, it only points in one direction. It's not like a, a lighthouse spotlight that moves around or anything. So just just come from the backside of the building. I don't, I just don't get it. If your, your plan is to, to form a, uh, an attack and that's why you want to do it, but whatever. But they start getting into it and talking about life and, and the whole thing. And I don't remember if it was this point or, or if it was after this point. No, I think it was after this point because then he gets a call on the walkie talkie and it's Howard. And uh, he's like, what's going on? He's like, all right, she got the board because she was able to find it. And uh, he was like, yeah, well, I'm leaving. It's just me. And he was like, good job. And then he locked yeah. her away. He locked her in one of the rooms, and there was like a bunch of walkers in there. She's screaming. He's like, why are you doing this to me? And all thing. And, you know, she's crying. And, and he just gets a change of heart. And he goes, he shoots all the walkers. He lets her out. And then this is it. This is where they have their first kiss. He's like, this is my first. And he, I guess this is his first two. And... Some people might say this is mushy mushy and, and get that world beyond, but this makes perfect sense. And this is why I actually like this episode because of this. Because <laughs> she, like she said, she was setting up, we know her backstory. Unlike World Beyond where they just had a pretty happy-go-lucky life at the university and everything mm -hmm. was cool and then they went out in the world and then trying to start these relationships and really didn't know what they were doing. She has seen some horrible things happen. She's done some horrible things. She has not lived a, a normal teenage life. And she sees her chance here. I mean, we don't we don't know how many other teenagers are at the tower. This is the first person that she's come in contact with that is in her age group, or at least he appears. He's still a teen. He's definitely under 18. And so it makes perfect sense in this situation of like, this is her way of like, this may be my only chance for anything. And I'm going for it. So it fit. I didn't feel like this was pushed in there just to throw it in. I, I, I think this makes perfect, especially for him. Like when he called up Howard, it's like, yeah, I'm leaving her. And it's only, well, not that he left her, but that it's only him leaving and, and all that. I'm like, really? This is your only chance that we know of? Again, we haven't seen everybody at the tower of anyone of your age group that you can interact with and to even form a relationship with. And you're going to leave that one person that you have come in contact with here to die? For what? It doesn't. It. She came clean. She told you what's going on. What's the point? And he made the right decision. He saves her. They, they have their bonding moment. And uh, they head back to the tower. You know, and before I go any further, this was the part you were pissed in. Right? So to break it down, what, what was your issue with all this part? Well, hold on a second. Well, let me backtrack for a second because there's something important that we should mention. They, you, Charlie and Ali did bond over her learning how to bowl for the very first time. Yeah. That was pretty much what started this and why he felt sympathetic towards her and why he had a change of heart. 
because again highlighting the fact that it was her first time she was still young didn't really ask to be brought into this type of situation living in in in, in the situation that they are in so that that's why so i i, I definitely understand that um I don't really have any criticism of that particular thing. It's just because of this romantic stuff with uh, in the comparison to World Beyond. I, 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 that, I that, 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 that is a little bit annoying because it was a little predictable that mm-hmm. how it was going to end. But um, you now you said you're now at the part where they return. Yeah. To so so here's so here's the thing. Um, I I'm now. The thing is, when he t- when he when he called Howard and told him that he was coming back by himself, and then he decides to bring her back, I knew at that point, okay, this character will not survive because you are you already lied to Howard, so now you have to make him question the decision of bringing her back, and then of course the whole thing, as you said earlier, where she, her her job was to turn off the beacon, but this is one of the most heavily guarded places. Mm-hmm in the building. So I don't know how the hell she imagined she was going to be able to even do that in the first place. Yeah. Um, but you know, him making the decision to go on ahead in like the thing is that she was exposed to the radiation, right? Well, that's when we get to, yeah, we find out once we get to the base, that's what we find out that she starts, she collapses. Okay. So continue what you were going to say. Then I, then I'll, I'll continue, uh, what my thoughts were at some point she had collapsed and he brings her over to uh june she needs treatment howard's like what's going on he's like i wasn't going to leave her to die this is ali we're going back and forth with the whole thing so then we find out that she has a lot of radiation points and he was like oh she was careful i'm like come on now you know she had no mask on but then again he also took his mask off so maybe he has it i don't know or maybe just from the time beforehand we don't really know because she has been out there for again no sense of time we don't know how long out there running around with morgan and them near the submarine taking their mask on and off so maybe it just uh, all that added up and now she's uh, severely sick but either way it's not looking good not looking good for her so uh later on he sets up a little room he, he goes by to visit he says hey come let me, let me take you walk and he lets all the butterflies out that strand had and they start dancing he puts on some music and again this could be a little oh this cheesy first of all this really didn't make much sense because now you're signing your own death warrant right there <laughs> doing something so reckless letting all these butterflies come on now that that i didn't understand that pissed me off because it was like you want to live here and you want to become a ranger and do all these good things whatever but then you do something reckless like for the releasing your boss's butterflies yeah it's what what are you thinking well it's simple he bought into the fact that now he all of a sudden he loves her now that's fine and, 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 and again it's like you know you know that uh now she's, you know, been exposed to radiation. They tell you that, you know, you don't know how much longer she has. So he he said, well, I'm going to appreciate these moments with you uh, right now for what they are. And I'm going to just let you have a good experience because, again, your time is limited. But, yeah, he did make that decision when, yeah. he, when he did that to also shorten his life as well. So Yeah, I mean, he went all in. If this was a game of poker, and he just put all the chips on the table. Because then even after that, she was like, well, this is great, but I still have to complete the mission. Turn the oh, don't worry, I'll go do it. <laughs> I was like, whoa. So you, you, that's it. You're all in on this. You're, you're setting up your own death warrant, and this is it. That's when I knew he's not going to make it. You know, and sure enough, he goes to the roof. And Howard's there, and there's altercation, and take a look out the window. Oh, look who's falling. There, goodbye, Ali. Your time has come and gone. You know, and Howard comes down, and he wants to grab uh, uh, Charlie, and June jumps in. He's like, no, no, no. She's under my protection. And he's like, well, what do you think Strand's going to say? And she brings up the best point possible. So I'm I'm more valuable here than you are. I'm the only doctor here. You're, you're Mm -hmm. You're just a goon. You know, what do you, what can you offer? And he can't really argue with that. And we saw a little bit where it sort of looked like J.D. Sr. was siding with Howard on things. But then we find out afterwards 
they didn't even let that whole conspiracy breathe at all because instantly right after that he's like no no i'm just like feeding him what he needs no i'm trying to get close to him so i can get into his ear but i don't think that's gonna work you know now and uh, the whole thing so it's like okay that that actually was what i enjoyed about this episode is because well first and foremost yes you know ali getting thrown off yeah, unfortunately, uh, I don't know why they want me to personally care about the character. I only met the character in one episode. I understand that they were making the connection that, yes, un- just like Charlie, he I mean, he grew up in th- these circumstances. You know, so obviously, you know, I-, I understand they wanted to make that connection. But for me personally, what I enjoyed about this episode is, yeah, uh, J.D., basically saying, you know, because in the moment when he was talking, trying to defend Howard, it made Mm -hmm. you think as a viewer, are they going to split sides of people who support Strand and people who go against Strand? Yeah, like he's been drinking the Kool-Aid. Like, oh, he's he's all in on this. Yeah, so I I like that because it, 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 it sort of is a hint of a conflict that can come a lot later because there may be people who actually do want to stay with Strand and then there are people who don't want to stay with Strand. So I'm curious to see how that is unveiled. But I also like JD's tactic of trying to win over uh, Strand because I think that he's going to end up getting killed as a result of that. Yeah. Because the thing is, he's talking about, oh, yeah, I can talk to Strand. I can reason with him and all this other stuff. That's why I want to see how that plays out for his character, because we already know that everybody is not going to make it out of the season. So mm-hmm. I'm curious to see if that's going to work in his favor or against him, and that could cut his time short on the show as well. So do you think Charlie's going to die? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. When I, when we did our last recap, I said I alluded to the fact that I think they have written themselves into a corner. Mm-hmm. Now you have a situation where Charlie and Alicia are both not now. I'm not expecting both of them characters to make it out of this season because they already told you that with Charlie's situation. She has a certain amount of time because she's been exposed to the radiation. Okay. So, okay, now she can somehow get cured, but I think it will be a cop-out for her and Alicia to leave this season and one of them sur- and, and, and they both survive. I think one of them has to go now because you can't have them both from for some... M- some yeah. They're both in bad shape. They're both, both in bad shape, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that, that's why I say, uh, but do I think she's going to survive? Um... I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. My, my issue is that they don't let anything breathe on this show. like, And that's what we were talking about with the Paul, where we are introduced to him, and then he dies. Ali, mm-hmm. we're introducing him, then he dies. Let these things play out. If you want the viewers to get invested, and you are trying to pull out that emotional... Uh, pull under the the heartstrings of the viewers. You gotta let these people linger at least three episodes, four episodes. Just make it that fool us, fool us thinking that this person is going to be a mainstay, one of the main characters, play a key part, and then surprise, surprise, this happens. Mm-hmm. But they they just gave it too much. They they gave it away too early, and and it's it's upsetting because when I saw this, I'm like, oh, this sort of makes sense. And then they can work together. And this could be that duo that is able to bring down the tower, at least with Strand. Because here's a guy that's trying to prove himself, work his way up in the ranks. And here's a girl that sort of had Howard fooled in a way. That it's like, oh, well, I'm just trying to earn my keep. I want to just be, you know, I'm young. I just want to live a life. This could have worked. This could have kept going on. It could have mm-hmm. until they figured it out. Maybe two or three episodes of them trying to figure out how to turn off the light when it made it seem like no i'll just go upstairs and do it <laughs> and then get busted for it it was it was horrible it was horrible and it, it sucked so for me this this was like a eh, it was a meh it wasn't as bad as last week's episode but yeah it definitely had some good and then it just it just flopped toward the end i was like ugh, this is the this is not what, what they should be doing with these characters just bring them in just to die and it's just like you know doesn't do anything but we'll see we'll see episode 11 from what we've seen with the trailer looks like there's a lot more action especially with daniel his involvement and what's going on there so uh because i think he's also dealing with uh, did they say it was dementia i think it was dementia 
Yeah, he has a memory loss. Yeah, and memory loss, and like then they that. were trying to say it was like linked to PTSD. They were trying to say something. I remember June was trying to break it down, and Grace was trying to explain it. He's dealing with some issues, so we'll see if that even pans out on this, or if they, maybe they just drop all of that all together. It's like, nah, he's fine. He was just stressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was it. I mean, there was nothing else. It was it was pretty much about this and. Pretty much what we thought when we first were introduced to Ali is what happened. New guy, fresh face. He comes in and then he dies. You know, so the question now is, will Charlie die? Can Ju- June says she's going to treat her. And that's the other part that sort of throws me off. Because, like, well, you said to Ali, it's really bad. Like, you don't see pretty much her walking away from this. But, yeah, you plan on treating her. What treatments are you using? I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. And I think Strand will be back, and then we'll, we'll take it from there and see how the whole thing pans out with Charlie, I mean, with uh, Howard. And I think even the showrunner sort of hinted that we're going to get a Howard-dedicated episode of his backstory. Because we don't really know anything about Howard. Because for those who don't remember, when Strand was, when the nuclear blast was happening, when he knew it was coming down, the missiles... He went running into this this building, and he went running to the high ground, and he finds that this one dude, which is Howard, living there by himself, and that was it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's how we were introduced, and we don't know much about him, and uh, they made it seem like we're gonna find out more on it. Which uh, honestly, I don't care because I think he the way they already portrayed him as like the the, the goon that'll just do anything. It doesn't matter at this point because he really doesn't have any say in anything. So, whatever. All right, people. Yep. That was it. That was uh, For the Welcome Dead Season 7, Episode 10, Morning Cloak. And um, we will be back for Episode 11. So, hopefully it picks up. Uh, this is one, of, like I mentioned in the opening, it's one of my better, uh, my favorite uh, spin-offs for any type of TV show. Because it's, it's got to be doing something right. We're on Season 7. People are watching it. But, man, this this has been pretty rough. This uh, this return from the midseason break. So hopefully it picks up and, and we start getting more with the story, more understanding of the need for this tower. Why this tower? Why can't you just go somewhere else? How mm-hmm. many people are in this tower? We've heard numbers before, like a hun- over a hundred. Oh. But but then this brings up to you what you were talking about. Like, is there a divide? Are there people that want to stay? People that want a new regime? I mean, there's always. In any situation, right? There's always people that want a change. But is that where we're going into? Like, the, It's going to be one of those situations where JD says, I found some of the rangers that are willing to fight with us to help Morgan take control of the tower. I don't mm-hmm. know. Because we know that the whole thing with Morgan is he's trying to get the baby. The baby's there. Little Morgan. Yeah. Because if people forgot, that's his thing. They took little Morgan away. And uh, what's his name? Strand wants to raise it as his own kid. (laughs) Which is bizarre. Yeah, bizarre. All right, people. We'll be back next week. And uh, have a good one. Latest.